Welcome back everybody. It is an unseasonably warm day here at the beginning of March 2019. So we figured I'd step outside and do this review outdoors. Mind you, we are outdoors, so please bear with the goose noise to quote Paul Harrell. Um, what we're talking about today is this rifle that you guys see on the table right here. It's the PWS Primary Weapon Systems uh, 308 Match 216 rifle. So uh, this one here has a 16 inch barrel as the name indicates, and uh, it's their newest one, at least that I know of. Um, it was released in 2018. It hasn't got a lot of press, um, but they reached out to me and see if I would be interested in doing a review. I've had it in for a few months now. We ran over a thousand rounds through it. So we're gonna bring it to the table here and talk about it, but it is chambered in 308 match. I did some research trying to figure out what the heck 308 match is because I was not familiar with that. Um, over the years, from what I've seen, there's been a bunch of different um, chamber specs published on 308 match. However, I haven't seen a definitive one that's like standard, if you will. So if I get some specs and drawings on it, I will roll that in. If not, we're just gonna roll with it. But either way, we're gonna step back out to the range and see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this rifle here with a few different loads. We got a few different loads for you to run through the rifle. Targets down range at 100 yards. We're using a CTK Precision Rest. We have a Nikon. This is the uh, Black FX 1000 mil or MRAD scope. Six by 24, plenty of magnification to get down there to 100 yards and you know poke holes in paper. So in the gun right now, we have some uh, PPU M80 ball, um, so nothing special, um, but it's a lighter weight. So we have some different weights here to run through it, and we'll just see how it does. Uh, for me, I like to see how rifles do with non-match ammo and match ammo, um, because if I can get away with not using match and not paying for it, I will. Um, but if I can't, I won't. So we're going to kind of test that here. We have the uh, suppress, or rather the Bowers Group suppressor out there on the end. It's the Verse 30 Ti. and. Uh, rifle is on the suppressor setting for those of you guys looking for injection pattern in pattern info rather let's do it loop looks good from here we'll go down and see here in a minute but definitely looks good that's actually the load that this rifle zeroed with so next up is going to be some uh, federal 168 grain this is the tactical tip match king tactical tip man that sounds like a gun mag advertisement anyway we will uh see how this rifle likes it if i can get this seated there you go group looks good here too, so that's good. All right, the last load we're gonna put through it is going to be some uh, Gorilla ammunition. This is, I believe, 175 grain, or, yep, 175 grain with the uh, Sierra Match King. Gorilla shoots well pretty much all the time when I bring it out, so hopefully this won't be an exception. Interesting. That's our first malfunction suppressed. Admittedly, it's the first time I ran that load too, so might be a little underpowered for it. I don't know what happened there. I'm gonna reload it though. Just kind of, you guys have seen it better than me, but watching the ejection pattern out the corner of my eye, it seems like that might not have enough juice and I might need to crank it over to a different piston setting if I was gonna run this ammo uh, exclusively. All right, let's go check them out. Again, the first group up was that PPU M80 ball. And for M80 ball, I'm definitely not mad about it. We're just over an inch and a half, maybe an inch and five eighths on that one. Then we came down here with the Federal, uh, I think it was True Tactical or something along those lines. And we are center to center, we're just busting an inch, maybe an inch and an eighth on that one. And then down here with the 175 Gorilla. Again, we're just over an inch and a half, maybe an inch and five eighths, very similar in terms of size there. Um, close to an MOA group there. Again, we only ran three loads through it, who knows, um, but seems to shoot pretty darn well. FYI, after just shooting that last scene, I bumped 
the uh, gas system up. It was on its lowest setting. I bumped it up, ran a few of those gorilla rounds through it, and it was kicking out like seven, eight feet off the edge. So that's definitely what it was. The accuracy that you guys saw there is what it is. However, I'm pretty confident if we had a little bit nicer trigger, maybe a little bit better shooter, and uh, some different loads, we could get this uh, barrel shooting sub MOA pretty consistently. It has a heavy taper to it, so you guys can see back here sort of a, a gas block. It's pretty heavy in terms of profile. Beyond that, it goes down to what appears to be about 0.75 inches. Um, the gas block is secured here via this uh, screw down system, which is really cool. Um, I think that's awesome. You can't have any type of gas leaking out the front of it, which is nice. However, um, we'll get into the operation, I suppose, right now, and we'll get into it a little bit more when we take it apart, but it does have an adjustable gas system that you guys see here. Um, when I was actually shooting that video that you guys saw just now at the range, I had it uh, set for the lowest amount of gas possible. Um, and that was the first time we were actually shooting using this Bowers Group. This is the Verse TI, so the titanium uh, 30 caliber suppressor from them. And this one here doesn't have as much back pressure as the can I had on there previously. So I had it on the lowest setting and that's where we had that short stroke that you guys saw there. Since then, uh, we bumped it up to the medium setting and I have not had a single malfunction of any kind with any ammo. So pretty good there in terms of that. Um, but the gas system has this little bleed off that it comes down through, um, which is unique to the uh, PWS system, at least that I know of. So it has a long stroke gas piston, which is very different in terms of feel than like a short stroke piston. Uh, just an example would be like uh, the FN SCAR. When you're firing the SCAR, it has a very abrupt recoil impulse. This one here is really smooth, and I think that has a lot to do with the bleed off system uh, and the four different ports that it taps off at as it goes down. Now, I should start out here on the muzzle because I'll get distracted if I don't. Um, out at the end, we do have a uh, standard 5A threads on there, so any of your 30 caliber uh, muzzle brakes, flash hiders, cans, etc., can go on there just fine. It does come with a I believe it's the FSC compensator, which is uh, super effective. However, in my opinion, it's totally unneeded on this rifle because this system, like I said, it's a very, very smooth shooter. And with that uh, comp on there, it just is super loud, super blasty, but it'll keep the rifle flat. Um, me personally, I'm just not a huge fan of brakes, as many of you guys know, um, but I know some of you guys will also like it. And obviously it's gained a lot of popularity because again, the FN Scar does use it. The barrel material here is 416R stainless steel. It has a QPQ finish or a nitride finish on there. It's got a one in 10 twist, 16 inch in length. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the barrel. The handguard the rifle comes with is a 15 inch free float m lock handguard you guys can see we have m lock at the three six and nine o'clock positions at the in-between positions you have some lightning cuts however those are not m lock compatible i should also point out that again at the three six and nine o'clock position where those m lock slots are it's beefed up so uh sort of like some of the guy screw rails like the old mk8s or mark 8 rails it has that sort of beefed up section where you're going to have the attachment point which i like it certainly can't hurt anything it's a little bit more rugged in that regard and then up here where the gas system is it has that cutout so that way you can can adjust it uh, very easily on the user side. It does come with an adjustment tool. However, I'm here to tell you, you don't need it. Uh, a bullet tip works just fine. If not, an Allen key will also work. I've used both and without issue. First off, you'll note that it doesn't have a forward assist. I'm one of the few guys out there that probably likes the forward assist. I tap it, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel confident in myself as a person. Um, but in all seriousness, there's a lot of folks that think uh, the forward assist causes more problems than it could ever solve. So. I guess PWS is in that camp. However, we do still have a shell deflector, so that way if you guys are left-handed, uh, you're not gonna be getting smacked in the face with brass, so that certainly is a good thing. Over here on the left side of the receiver from the shooter's perspective, it has this little uh, beefed up bulged area, and that's uh, seemingly becoming more and more common in ARs. I know BCM has a prototype like that um, that they're testing right now. Seekins also has an upper receiver like that, and that's because of the torque that's happening there. <laughs> And the barrel extension here on the receiver uh, with the twist rate of the um, barrel. So that's why it's like that. That's a high stress point there. And uh, we'll pull out the sort of heart and soul of the this particular system, which is the long stro stroke piston. And if I can do it carefully, it'll come out one piece. If not, it won't. Uh, do it both ways there, maybe. Come on, girl. There you go. All right, we got it out. I should also note there that the upper receiver does have M4 feed ramps in there, so it is cut for that. We'll sort of set that off there to the side and focus on this little guy here. So it does come with the long stroke gas piston. Like I said, it is a two-piece system. However, it functions as a one-piece system, but it's two-piece for cleaning and disassembly and so on. You guys can see standard piston there up front with the little vents. There's nothing too fancy going on there. And then 
it does come with a radian uh, ambidextrous charging handle here so it's oversized which i really like particularly on 308s i've said that before a million times if you have to clear a stoppage on a 308 it takes a little bit of extra force with the springs and the weight of everything that's going on so those extra uh, grasping surfaces that these ambidextrous larger charging handles come with is certainly appreciated at least it is to me Again, a few different things going on here on the bolt carrier group. We can actually get it out. The actual uh, bolt pin, or the retaining pin, the firing pin, or retaining pin rather, is captive. So uh, let's see if we can actually get it. There we go. And you pull it off to the side. You guys can see it's not going to come any further than that. So it's captive in that regard. Let's see if we can get our firing pin to drop out. All right, got that out. And then you guys will see that. The cam pin here has this nickel Teflon finish on there. It's not unique to the cam pin. It's also going to be found here on our bolt. So the bolt is made out of S7 tool steel. Again, and then it's gonna have that nickel Teflon finish on there. This one here seems to have a little bit of staining on it. Again, we're just over a thousand rounds to this particular rifle, um, but no unusual wear. One thing that is sort of unusual on it is that it has these little chamfer cuts here on the rear of the bolt lugs and that's to help it unlock and reduce stress when it's unlocking. Uh, there's a few rifles I reviewed here in the past that have it. Same sort of thing, just again, once the, one of those little things that PWS does that some companies don't do. You'll note here, of course, the piston is one piece here on the carrier. There's no gas going through there, so you don't need to worry about chrome lining a gas key. We do have staked uh, screws in there. A unique staking system, I've not seen anything else quite like it. and. Um, you know, also note that the carrier itself has some unique dimensions. It has these flat sides here on both sides towards the front. And again, that's to uh, allow dirt and debris to be in the upper receiver and to not impede the flow of the carrier as it goes back. You'll also note that when you look back here on the rear of the carrier, it gets thicker towards the rear. One of the reasons that is, is that piston systems, particularly short stroke piston systems, I've not actually heard of it with long stroke, um, but have had some tipping and carrier tilt it's called, uh, which can impede and erode back here on your receiver extension. It's to prevent that as it goes through and just give it a nice solid contact surface. Just like the upper, the lower receiver has some cool stuff going on. We do have a nice magwell flare here. Again, I've said that for years here on the channel, there's no reason in 2019 for a company to be putting out an AR pattern rifle without a good mag flare. It just aids in reloading. It doesn't cost you anything strength-wise. In fact, you might gain something with it. We do have the integrated trigger guard there. It does have the skeletonized cuts in there to reduce weight a little bit. Let's talk about that. This rifle here, as it comes from the factory, um, without any accessories on it, is 8.1 pounds on my scale. So not light at all, but not uh, super heavy either for some AR-10s. I should also note that the bolt catch here compared to a standard AR bolt catch is enlarged. Um, this is one of the weaker areas of AR-10s, also AR-9s for those that don't know that. They tend to shear. I actually have a video where that happened to me. Um, and this one here is enlarged both the surface area where it actually contacts the bolt as well as the whole area that cams here underneath. So that's a smart touch there by PWS. They have good fencing there around the mag release so that way you're not gonna accidentally bump it. The safety is single side only. I know some folks won't like that. Um, the area there where the pins, the takedown pins engage are enlarged, which is nice. It does have that nylon screw in there. What that's for is to tighten up your upper and lower receiver fit uh, should it ever become loose. I'm gonna tell you this one here is very snug even after all the rounds we've put through it. So um, if it ever does come loose though, you can loosen it. Trigger here has a nickel boron type finish on there, and it's very smooth. It's mil spec though in terms of pull weight. Mine breaks right at five pounds on my scale, and it has that different trigger spring in there, the purple one. Not sure what the weight on that is, but we've not had any like primary strikes or anything like that, which certainly is good. It has a really nice positive reset, as you guys can hear there. We do have an H2 buffer in there. And then uh, at the rear here, we also have relief cuts at the rear of the receiver. So that way you're gonna save yourself a little bit of weight. And we have the PWS ratcheting system here and that attaches the receiver extension to the lower receiver and it does so eliminating the need to stake it. So I know that's something that is sort of controversial. I have a full review on this uh, ratcheting system, but it's really cool. What it does is it utilizes a custom end plate, which has a QD socket there for your slings, but it also has a detent in there. And as you tighten it down and torque it down, it ratchets in and it clicks each time you go through there. Again, I have a full review on it. Check it out if you guys are interested, um, but it, prevents it from backing out under recoil um, as castle nuts tend to do, particularly if they're not staked or loctited and or both. And the receiver extension there is PWS's proprietary receiver extension. It has those 
relief cuts in there, both along the exterior of the receiver extension itself and then also along the base here where you're going to have the little um, detents where the stock locks in. Uh, that's to let any sort of dirt, debris, water, etc. come out on a normal operation. And then the furniture on the lower is Bravo Companies, both the gunfighter grip that we have here, which is a little bit more of a vertical angle, uh, gives you a little bit more of a natural hand placement on there, at least in my opinion. And then we have the gunfighter stock here, which is excellent. Again, I have a full review on both of those actually. And uh, this is one of the more durable stocks out there on the market. You take a look at some of the drop tests on it and uh, it holds up extremely, extremely well. So uh, nothing to complain about there furniture wise. Reassembling the rifle is a pretty standard affair with one exception. You guys probably noticed it when I took it down, but you have to take the long stroke piston there and separate it into the two pieces. Set that piece in through the charging handle. We got some guys drag racing behind me, it sounds like. Between them and the geese, we have some interesting sounds out here today. Then you're going to attach your uh, long piece there on the piston and you're going to set it in. And just like any sort of charging handle, you got to get it in the actual little takedown portion for it but you also kind of have to balance it here with the piston system it's a little bit tricky but you do it a couple times you'll get the hang of it we've covered a lot of the details we've covered accuracy we've covered reliability um, so i suppose we need to get on to price so it's not inexpensive that's for sure i would imagine most of you guys have already guessed that after the least list rather of features that we've gone over so far Looking around online today, found a couple places selling it for right around $1,900. So it is not inexpensive. However, it's not super expensive either. Um, this rifle is, in my opinion, competing for, you know, sort of like AR-10 battle rifle type uh, place in the marketplace. So, you know, with that, you're looking at like the Daniel Defense uh, V5s. You're looking at perhaps some would say the FN SCAR, particularly being a long stroke uh, gas piston. Again, the SCAR is a short stroke. Um, and the SCAR is definitely a super proven design, so no knocking that. However, it's gonna run you about $1,200 more than this one is. Um, so if you're comparing the two, that's definitely one thing to look at. Again, in my limited use on this rifle, just over a thousand rounds, the only malfunction we had was, again, not having the gas system set correctly. So otherwise, it's been super reliable. It is definitely a more comfortable shooter than the SCAR, but the SCAR is battle-proven, right? So you can't, you can't kind of beat that. But this one definitely has more features. It's more ergonomic. Um, so pros and cons to that. I think a lot of folks are going to like the sort of design of the gas system here. I think I'm not alone in that. PWS has built a good reputation for making very reliable rifles and avoiding some of the pitfalls that uh, gas piston ARs have had in the past. Um, this one here has all their modern updates on it, you know, so um, in terms of reliability, in terms of not having carrier tilt, in terms of all those sorts of things, I think you're going to have some pretty good luck with this. If you choose to pick one up, of course, we will continue shooting this. I have reviews on this scope to go. I have reviews on that suppressor to go. So there's definitely going to be more rounds going through this rifle here on the channel. Um, but I think um, in the a marketplace that has, again, some options a lot lower than this and a lot of options a lot higher than this, this is a good sort of uh, value for what the price is and what you get for your money. So uh, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions about the rifle, again, like I said, post down below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page. That's the best place to get me. If you actually need an answer, I see all the questions over there, whereas I don't always see all the comments over here on YouTube. Um, if you guys aren't subscribed and you like what you saw here, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, thank you very much for subscribing and thank you for watching regardless. I hope to see all of you in the next video.